speak and say the words that no one else will ever say. Like a world we know is over in the day. I'm gonna show you love in every language. I'm gonna speak with words that need no form. I'm gonna give you what you never had before. Good morning and welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. My name is Rachel Callender. I am the associate pastor here. And so on behalf of myself, our senior pastor, Reverend Joe Monahan, the staff, the congregation, we are so excited to be worshiping with you all today. Um, you'll notice that there are some attendance pads coming around and we ask that you will sign them to let us know that you are here. Um, if you're new to the space, we would love for you to also put your contact information so that we can get connected with you and tell you about all the great ministries that we have going on here. Um, if you're joining us at home, you can also share your attendance with us by going to medfordumc.org slash online dash attendance. Um, you can also share your stream on Facebook to let people know where it is that you worship. Um, and our website, medfordumc.org, can also be used to manage your giving. You can do that on our app, which is available for Apple or Android. And uh, we give thanks uh, just to be connected here in the room and with our friends online. Um, today's a fun Sunday. We have basically pushed off Pentecost a week. Um, we will be celebrating Ascension this Sunday. Oh, got a microphone change. There you go. Um, uh, Ascension this Sunday and um, Pentecost next Sunday because next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday. So I hope that you'll join us again for that. Um, with all this in mind, I would like to trans uh, transition into a time of prayer. So as the opening prayer comes up on the screen, this is a prayer written by Nancy C. Townley of Ministry Matters. And I hope that you'll join me in reciting this prayer. God of incredible surprises, as we gaze into the clouds, remind us that we are standing on holy ground. Place our feet on the pathways of hope, peace and hope, 
draw our attention from the vision of the Lord rising to the heavens to be with you and help us to focus on the ministries that you would have us do. Keep us ready and willing always to serve you all our days. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our time of worship. It's wonderful to worship with you together. Please stand with us as you're able. We're going to sing together.
We bless your name this morning. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to invite any kids that are in the congregation to come on up. Friends that are at home, please come closer to the TV. I've got balloons. Who wants to come play with a balloon? Anybody? Anybody? I agree. I knew you'd come and help me. All right. Oh, there's Margaret. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Hold on. I don't want these to fly too far away. Hold on. All right. Give me a minute, everyone. Balloons are fun. If anyone changes their mind, you're welcome up at any time. All right, and even if you don't come up, the balloons are up for grabs at the end of the service, so you can come get one and uh, try what, uh, what we're going to do today during our children's time. Yeah, so Margaret, you've got the right idea. So can you grab a balloon and hold it all the way down? Hold it all the way down. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to hold this balloon down, right? So what happens if we let it go? It'll fly away. Now it's not a word tied. It's tied, right? Do you know what's inside the balloon that causes it to float up? It is. It's like a. It's a gas, right? Do you know what that gas is called? Wow! Kiss that smart brain of yours. That's right. Can you say helium? Helium, right? So it helps the balloon. If we just use our own air and blew into it, it would just stay on the ground. So the helium helps us. Helps it float up, okay? So we're going to use the balloon because this is a Sunday that we're celebrating a story in the Bible called Ascension Sunday. Can you say ascension? Ascension is a fancy word for floating up. It's just going to float up, right? So I'm going to tell you a story that started at Easter time. We've been talking a lot about Easter, right? It started at Easter time, and at Easter... Jesus did that special thing, right, where he died on the cross for us. And then what happened? He came back alive, right, Margaret? Good job. So he came back to life. And guess what? He stayed and hung out with his friends, the disciples, for a while. So they were super happy. They're like, oh, good. He's going to hang out with us now forever. But guess what? There was, oh, Jesus was trying to prepare him prepare his disciple friends to say, listen, I do have to go back to heaven and be with God. So there's going to come a time where I'm going to return to my father in heaven. And guess what's going to come after that? The Holy Spirit. And you three have been coming to kids church. We've talked about the Holy Spirit, right? With the flames and the wind. We're going to talk about that next Sunday. But right now, He's still with his, his friends, and he's saying, I have to go back to heaven, but the Holy Spirit is going to come soon, okay? Hold that down. And guess what he did? At, so at first, if you're told that somebody that you really like is going to go away, what, how do you feel? Yeah, it, you might feel sad or disappointed, like, I really like that person. I don't want them to go away from me. Right, and, right? Oh, no, right. It's sad to think of that, right? And we don't want that. And that's how the disciples, at first, that's how they felt. And have you ever had a balloon that had helium in it and you went outside? What happens if you let it go? All the way up. Have you ever watched it go far, 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 far? Oh, oh, it's gone. Have you ever done that? Yeah. You're, you're very careful with your balloon. Yeah, you've never let it go. Good for you. Oh, helium balloons after you're done eating. That's a great place. You'll have to tell me about that later. Awesome. And you get to choose the color of the balloon. I know, you only get two choices today. But, but that sounds like a cool place to eat. So what the rest of the story goes like this. So the disciples, just like you, when you said when someone goes away, they were sad. The disciples were sad that Jesus would be leaving them. But then the Bible tells us that Jesus opened their minds. He explained to them so that they could understand that by him going away, more amazing things, more new things will happen. The Bible tells us that Jesus lifted 
his hands. He blessed all of his friends, the disciples. And when he was blessing them, he started to lift up, up away, right? Everyone let, let your balloon go. That didn't go very far, right? But we're going to kind of pretend like we're the disciples and be like, ready? Went way, way further, all the way up. Look how far. And I think when we look at this balloon all the way up high to the heavens, I feel like in my imagination I can see the disciples standing there and watching as Jesus ascended higher and higher until he disappeared from view. And guess what? This time the disciples weren't sad. They were joyful because Jesus shared with them that they were to go and tell the world about God's love. And by this change, by Jesus going, they had that special work to do. And it was a new chapter, a new time of excitement for them. So when, we, when you take your balloon and you take it home and it might fly, float up to the ceiling, you can think about the joy the disciples had. And when changes happen for you, Think of them joyfully and think of all the special things you can do with that change. What do you think? All right. That sounds good. You've got plans for your balloon. That's awesome. And I left them long so that you could do that. All right. So let's pray. All right. Let's pray so that we can hear more about this from Pastor Rachel. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus, your only son, to die for our sins. We know that he has risen from the dead and has returned to heaven. Bless us today as we worship him with great joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, can you bring those back over there? And at the end of the worship service, you can take one home with you, okay? I also want to let you know all kids that are in the congregation, there are coloring things and different fun things that are in the back corner that you're welcome to at any time during worship, okay? Thank you. All right, you guys can go back and play at Kids Corner, okay? Not quite as tall as Patches to Rachel. Uh, good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from Acts 1, verses 1 to 11. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Wash over us so that we may shine with the brightness of you that lives inside of each and every one of us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God, now and forever. Amen. There's nothing like a service of ordination to give you the sensation of being bathed in the Holy Spirit. And even though this year's service of commissioning and ordination here in the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference was a virtual one, 
Many of you who watched online remarked about how palpable the spirit felt. Even through a webinar on your laptop, the spirit was still alive. And this service is probably one of the most sacred services that we have in the Methodist Church. And I can tell you from being a part of one and also having watched many of these ordination services that there is nothing in the world that can convince me more of the energy of the Holy Spirit than an ordination service. And I remember the first time I attended one, and this was back before COVID, when it was a huge jam-packed space in Wildwood with people waving streamers and a group of people laying hands on each of the candidates and people dancing. I didn't even know most of the people who were being ordained, but I was just so emotionally invested in the invocation of the Holy Spirit by the bishop for a life of holy service. How stunning. And so this year, that moment from the bishop of inviting in the Holy Spirit, having the hands of the bishop laid on my head, I was crying, my dad was sobbing, right? It's very powerful. And this service, similarly to our sacraments of baptism and communion, like I talked about last week and like we'll see shortly, have an outward, visible invoking of the Spirit. There's a reason why red the red of Pentecost is typically overlap with the ordination service and similarly for a confirmation like we're gonna have next week, it's about what the spirit has done, is doing, and why that even matters. The Holy Spirit, arguably the most abstract, fluid, feeling and experience oriented member of the Trinity. We know God, familiar with God's work, we know Jesus and his genealogy, his, his teachings, his sacrifice. Yet the Holy Spirit often leaves us grasping for the right words. And over the past several weeks, we have discussed the works of the Spirit from many different lenses. We've looked at the results and the way that the Spirit influences us. And so here today, as we celebrate Ascension Sunday, like as I mentioned before, technically it's Pentecost Sunday, but we've sort of shifted the calendar a bit. So as we talk about ascension, and we go all the way back to the opening lines from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the first real introduction of the Holy Spirit before we even get to the telling of the Pentecost event. We're posed with musing over why the Holy Spirit and what does the call to action of the Holy Spirit mean for the modern Christian? Because really, next to the resurrection, the promise of the Spirit is the most important promise of the gospel. Why? Pastor John Paul Warren said it well when he said, the Holy Spirit will always point people to finish the work of Jesus. So let's break all this down. Our Acts writer is most likely our gospel writer, Luke. And it seems that he has been funded by a wealthy Greek new comfort name, convert named uh, Theophilus to recall his experiences of traveling with Paul trying to spread the the message of hope from the gospel story and Luke who has the largest most detailed of all the four gospels offers the most precise summation of his gospel volume one to Theoph Theophilus to introduce Acts volume two he writes Theophilus the first scroll meaning the book of Luke, I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning right up to the day that he was taken up to heaven. That's it. That's the entire summation, right? He gets right to the point, and he goes in a little bit more to explain that the resurrected Christ spends about 40 days with his friends, which uh, 40 simply means a long period of time. We see that with the 40 days in the wilderness, the 40 years in exile, and that Jesus, and I quote, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, foretold what was to happen. Jesus then connects this Pentecost event that they don't know about yet, they have no idea what he's talking about, of the people being bathed in the Holy Spirit, it being inescapable, to the baths, the waters of baptism. It's really gorgeous imagery. 
And I think of that feeling during the ordination service where it's clear that it's not just me feeling the Holy Spirit, but the entire room, and you can't help but breathe it in and let that Holy Spirit fill your lungs. It's just so, it's like thick in the room. But the disciples do exactly what any of us would probably do if Jesus was in front of us telling us that the Spirit was going to bathe us and change us forever and baptize us in that, right? They go, okay, that's cool. So um, there's a lot of war and disease and stuff. When are you going to take care of that? Is that going to happen now, right? Totally bypass what Jesus has told them. And I wish, I wish that Luke put in a stage direction or something of Jesus just sort of rolling his eyes. Because I think that's the whole point. When God broke all the conceptions of what God could be, by deciding to be born as a human, to suffer and to defeat death itself in order to restore the broken relationship that we have with God, the people thought that God was finishing something, that the kingdom was nigh, right? When actually God was starting something, something that needed to get started by shaking up power structures and challenging tradition and religious oppression. The resurrection is that message of hope that God is bigger than the sting of death, yet Christ ascending, no longer tangibly being there to break bread and to shake people's hands, tells us that by sending in the spirit, it says, you want a kingdom? Go make it. That we have a role to play in the resurrection, the the restoration of God's kingdom. The Holy Spirit will always point people to finish the work of Jesus. God sending down the Holy Spirit to work within us is the most important part of the whole thing besides for the resurrection because it's how the kingdom comes to earth. That transition into a new way of pursuing God's mission in the world transitioned into this new expressive gut feeling kind of work 2,000 years ago and that's still how it works today. We are the inheritors of God's plea to put in the work of loving God and our neighbor. We are the inheritors called to work in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are the inheritors of the bath of the Holy Spirit. Now let's do something with it and not just wait the Spirit out. Pope Francis once said, to put it simply, the Holy Spirit bothers us. Because he moves us, he makes us walk, he pushes the church forward. But don't bother us. We want the Holy Spirit to doze off. We want to domesticate the Holy Spirit. And that's no good because he is God. He is that wind which comes and goes and we don't know where. He is the power of God. He is the one who gives us consolation and strength to move forward. But to move forward and this bothers us. It's so much nicer to be comfortable. Are we too comfortable? Are we too desensitized to violence and suffering? It's so normal. Are we so overworked that we just allow it to be someone else's problem? Perhaps. But there's one thing that I don't think that we can be too much of, and I don't think that we can be too sensitive. Be sensitive. Allow the world, people's words, people's actions to affect you, to help you see with eyes wide open the brokenness of humanity and the grace that God uses to glue it back together. God gives us life. Christ's resurrection gives us hope, and the Spirit gives us purpose. Jesus tells the disciples to not concern themselves with a date and a time for the full restoration of God's kingdom. That's God's problem. Imagine the mess that would ensue if we actually knew a specific day that we were working up to. Everyone would be so horrible to each other. You know, it's like, oh, we only have a week left. I don't need to help them, right? But rather, he tells them that the Spirit is going to inspire them to share hope and love across many lands. And with that, Jesus ascends into heaven. And they were staring up at him when two men in white robes asked, Why are you staring up at heaven? Jesus is still going to be there if you blink or you look away. Jesus knows how to get back, right? Trust that heaven's covered. And instead, look forward. 
close your eyes and remember those momentary glimpses of God's true kingdom that you have experienced. It could be a moment of real sacrificial love and honesty, a moment of uninhibited vulnerability, a moment of absolute untainted joy where the concept of time itself just seems to lose all meaning. Remember those moments and look forward. Call upon the Holy Spirit to bring that to life today. So as we celebrate the Holy Sacrament of Communion in just a few minutes, and I know many of you have heard the words of this ritual so many times, but I really want you to breathe in the Spirit, to, in, to visualize the Holy Spirit coming down into this meal, into the sharing of the body and blood of Christ as a community in deep relationship with each other where we care about each other. And I want you to let that affect us today. Let us come to God in prayer. Holiest of God, change us, affect us, work through us so that God's kingdom can be found here on earth. Use us to share the hope the Gospels offer us and chip away at our desire to wait your call out. We long to be an instrument of peace this day and every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. I have the joy and privilege um, as the church. <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this. <laughs> Transitions bring so much joy. But like I said to the kids, a little bit of, will choke me up a little bit too. But I have the joy and the privilege to uh, lead our graduation recognition at this time. And so I get to start by acknowledging all of the graduates from both high school and college. Um, if you're present with us today, when I read your name, just stand where you are for now. Um, if you're at home, this is the beauty of our uh, hybrid worship now. I am just saying to those who are tuning in virtually that your church family is celebrating you today. So I'll start. Um, if you did not get it, there is a blue um, pro uh, program that you can read all the details on about our graduates. So graduating from high school um, is Jake Bradfield from St. Joseph Prep. He's actually graduating from St. Joseph Prep today, so we won't see him, but that is where he is. Benjamin Carl will be graduating from Cherokee High School. Elise Dixon will ch graduate from Cherokee High School and attend North Carolina State University for criminology. Lydia Palmer will graduate from Cherokee High School and attend Texas A&M. Allie Mace will graduate from Cherokee High School and attend the University of Scranton for secondary education and history. Ethan Rich, he's already standing all the way in the back. <laughs> he's, he was in our video room uh, volunteering. And he'll graduate from Shawnee High School and attend Clemson University for Landscape Architecture. Ryan Sharpley will graduate from Shawnee High School and attend Washington College. And Paige Takazuski, oh, she moved from the kids' corner back to our seat. <laughs> and she'll graduate from Shawnee High School and attend Stockton University for Environmental Science. Um, stay standing. Um, but our college graduates are Kaylin DG Marino. She graduated from Villanova University with a master's in business administration. Madison Fearon graduated from the University of Minnesota School of Education and Human Development with a Bachelor of Business and Marketing Education, a minor in Communication Studies, and a Certificate in Human Resources. Wow. <laughs> she can do it all. <laughs> That's amazing. Rachel Moyer um, graduated from the University of Rochester Medical School with a Doctorate in Medicine, and Kelsey Roswell graduated from Rowan University with a Master's of Education in Teacher Leadership with a concentration in Reading. And my message to all the graduates today, I want to acknowledge that the past couple years has had a lot of challenges through the pandemic. As Pastor Rachel said in our weekly newsletter this week, you were only sophomores when the COVID lockdown hit and have the majority of your high school or college experiences affected. We want to lift you up today in celebration of your many accomplishments and the tenacity it took during an extremely difficult time. I know that you will do great things in this world. As it says in 1 Timothy 4.12, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. I set this as a challenge to each of the graduates today and pray you find success in all ways you interact with the world around you. So now, I think all that are standing are our, our uh, scholarship recipients, so I'm going to invite you to come stand on the stage with me so we can celebrate you a little bit further. So as they're coming up, I want to say we have the honor of celebrating these high school graduates with monetary support through our scholarship fund for those who are planning to attend college in the fall. And as keep coming up, you can go all the way down that way. And I have to say, I, I'm, I'm extremely emotional because I've known some of them since they were babies, some since elementary school. Good, I'm glad I'm short. You guys can see over top of me. Um, and, and also the blessing of seeing them as a confirmation class and then watching them grow, especially through this pandemic, has been quite a blessing. And they have grown in so many ways. And while their journeys have taken different paths during their high school careers, they've all included time growing their faith with Medford United Methodist Church. 
So our, our scholarship recipients include the following people. Where's Elise? Elise Dixon, there she is. In her time in high school, Elise has been most involved in mission trips and vacation Bible school. She finds the church has provided her with both an outlet and support through her life and knows her MUMC family is here for her always. Through all her um, opportunities to serve, whether it's in her community or here within the church, they have been ways to use her hands in service to connect with many otherwise she would not have been involved with. Knowing her passion for working with and helping others, I, find, I feel confident Elise will continue to add God's goodness into the world. Allie Mace. In her time in high school, Allie has been involved in youth choir, been a junior choir helper, attended youth groups and mission trips, assisted with Sunday school, VBS, and more. And while the pandemic has affected these activities and her ability to participate, she has found ways to connect with God through her times with devotionals. I know that Allie feels connected to God and her church family, and that will go with her into the world and will guide her. Ethan Rich, where's Ethan? There you are. <laughs> Ethan, in his time in high school, Ethan has stayed active playing in the handbell choirs during our 11 o'clock worship and volunteering his time in the tech team. As I said, he just came down from the tech room. Um, and it's so valued. Ethan shared that this work has given him skills to think on his feet and grow in his confidence, and this confidence has helped him to participate in other things outside of the church walls, community projects, and helping people. And with how Ethan has grown in confidence in who he is through these years, I know he will continue to discover how to offer his gifts to the world. And Ryan Sharpley, the other tall guy behind me. <laughs> in his time in high school, Ryan has um, was able to participate in many service-oriented act activities with the church. He says that he grows as a Christian by giving his time and supplies to others in need. Through the pandemic, he has found his connection to God through individual prayer, and Ryan has shared that his faith has helped him through the pandemic and knows that, the, and I know, that the Holy Spirit is working in his life now and will continue as he takes his steps into the world. Paige Takazuski. In her time in high school, Paige has remained an active member with handbell choirs, service activities, youth groups, and mission trips. The mission trip has offered her experiences that taught her when she puts her time, energy, and attention on those in need, she can become a more understanding Christian. This year, Paige has enjoyed her time in Jubilation Bells and attended 815 worship, which was new to her. She values the relationships she has formed and is grateful for these bonds that are helping her as she moves into adulthood and also helps with her continued growth as a Christian. Paige will take all of these connections with her church family with her, and I feel confident that God will continue to walk beside Paige as she steps into the world and grows even more. And now... As you all step into the world, know that your MUMC family will be here praying for you. I wish you many joys and successes as you start your journey, and know that your church family will be happy when you are able to come home to visit so we can hear about all your adventures. We pray you will keep the things you learned about God and Jesus here at MUMC close to your heart and lean on them and use the Holy Spirit to guide you as you do it all. Can we give them a round of applause? All right. You gonna give me your card? If you're here again, you have to give it back to me. <laughs> Congratulations from your school box to the whole university for your <laughs> All right, you can go ahead back. Thank you, everyone. Um, I encourage you, the scholarship fund is something that we take uh, much pride in, that we can, uh, we can support. Uh, young people in this transition in their life, we all know that the price of higher education keeps getting higher and higher. Um, and so I want to encourage you, as you prayerfully consider giving to the church, um, that maybe one of the ministries you might consider gifting to be the scholarship fund. It's on the drop-down menu in the app. Or you can always put it in the memo line and, um, when you donate a check to the church. But I, just, I hope that you'll prayerfully consider that sort of giving. We'll now transition um, into our time of Holy Communion. I want to remind you that 
The Lord's table is open to everyone. You do not need to be a member of this church nor any other to partake. We do have gluten-free options, so if, and I'll be the one with the gluten-free uh, basket, so if you need gluten-free, just give me like a little hand up and I will make sure that, that gets to you. We'll still be using the one, um, the one, uh, the one piece cups is what I was trying to say. And for those of us, you who are joining us at home, I invite you to grab a bit of bread or maybe some crackers, some water and some juice so that you can join us in this time of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And because you are good, we offer to you this morning our joys, our celebrations, our thanksgivings. And so I invite you here in the room, if you have any prayers of joy to share with us this morning, that you share them aloud. And if you're joining us online, please share these prayers of joy in the chat. They have any prayers of joy. Joy of all the graduates, definitely. Joy of all the children back in the back. I love that. Birthdays. I'm sorry? Yes, marriage, yes, wonderful. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. We trust that when we gather in Jesus' names and lift our prayers to you, you hear us. And we come to the table this morning with many concerns upon our hearts. So I invite you to share any concerns that you may have so that we can join you in that prayer and same with those of you who are joining us online. Do you have any prayers of concern? At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away from the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering the sight to the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with you us always, baptizing us in the Holy Spirit and with the fire as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And on the day you raised him from the dead, he, recognized by, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. If you're joining us at home, I invite you to put your hands over the elements that you have in front of you. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake from one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. I'll invite the servers to now come forward. in the room, I invite you to begin trying to open the, the one piece right now. You might have to wiggle the tab a little bit. First, let us receive the wafer. And those who are joining us at home, you can join us by saying these words to one another. The body of Christ broken for you.
then let us receive the cup. And those at home, share with these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us conclude with this prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to... I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let us now celebrate together as we sing Child of Love. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're comfortable and able. this day, allow it to change you and to be made new for God's kingdom. Go in peace and go with God. Amen. <laughs>